What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about the version 2, revision 4, Smoke Tech VMAX. Now this is the stainless steel revision 4. Um, wh why I say revision 4, um, other like vendors they call it version 4. Um, they really only have two versions of VMAXs. They have the version 1 and then they have the version 2 in different revisions. Um, the reason why this is a revision 4 is because they added the Ego top cap and um, blue LCD screen. I hold it up to the version 1 you can see the um, the Ego top cap is just a tad bit taller. The only thing different between these looks wise the version 1 had a little lightning bolts on it. The version 2 has little dimples in it. Um, the version 2 has shorter, more spaced out lines going down the middle of the body. And um, the bottom caps has the dimples on the version 2 and the lightning bolts on the version 1. Um, they did improve the button a lot over the version 1. No more rattling. Does not rattle at all. Nice and sturdy. Nice clicky button. Um, with the version 2, it will reset to uh, 3 volts when you take your batteries out and uh, it will turn off your LCD screen. You have to go into menu set number 6 to turn it back on before you'll be able to access any of the other functions. Um, now what they did between the version 1 and version 2 um, you know, electronically wise, the uh, circuitry in it um, they have pulse width modulation chipset in here and it's a step down device. What it does is it takes two 3.7 volt batteries and steps down the voltage to a um, you know, a lower voltage, whatever you want to set it at. Um, what they did between the version 1 and version 2, they took the version 2 and lowered the pulse width modulation voltage spikes so it doesn't spike as high, so that means it's not going to hit as hard as the version 1 did. I know lots of people that's really complaining about the version 1 just hit too hard. You set it at 4.2 volts and it feels like 6 volts compared to another you know, PV. Um, I really didn't have no complaints about that. I love the way it hits. I love the way this one hits. They did not make this weak by any means. It still hits just as hard. But the um, that spike is lowered between I'd say 3 to 4.5 volts. Anything above 4.5 volts is pretty much the same as the version 1 because that really didn't need tampered with. Um, but they did lower from 3 to 4.4 volts. They did lower that spike so it's not going to hit as hard and it's not going to toast up your low resistance or whatever. Um, really pretty much so in my opinion there's no need to run low resistance in a PV like this. Um, low resistance was created for fixed 3.7 volt devices to simulate high voltage vaping. Um, what you'll want for a VMAX is about a 3 ohm single coil or a 2.5 ohm dual coil you don't really want to go any lower or higher than that if you if you I mean you can but this is just what I'm recommending to get the most you know get the most options out of your VMAX to be able to select the biggest the widest range of voltage the widest range of wattage then that's what you want about a 3 ohm single coil or 2.5 ohm 2 to 2.5 ohm dual coil this will run triple coils too it has a 5 amp limit um, unlike any other PV out there. Most PVs like say the newest version of Lava Tube only has like a 3 amp limit. I think the Pro Vary has a 3.5 amp limit. Um, this has a 5 amp limit so it's going to push anything and everything you put on it all the way to 6 volts. And it's not going to limit anything. It's not going to give you error messages unless you have like a shorted cool or um, a short between your automizer connection and the uh, PV connection. St stuff like that. Uh, if you put a, like say a 1.0, 1.1 ohm coil on it, it won't push that because that's just too low. It'll give you a, a F1 error. Um, so that's about the only errors you're going to get out of it. If you try to run something below 1.2 ohms. Um, I put a 1.3 ohm dual coil on here and it vaped all the way to 6 volts. Did not limit anything. It was one hell of a horrendous hit. I just did it to test it out just to see if it would and it did and it did it flawlessly um, 
let's get to the looks and the um the overall what they did with the revision for version two. Um, this is the stainless steel version. It's not quite a um a mirror finish. It's almost though. It's really shiny. It's got a nice shine to it. It's not a fingerprint magnet neither though. It's like this one right here where it's chrome. You can just see all the fingerprints on it. It just looks kind of dingy. Um, the finish on this won't do that to you. Um, it's got a nice smooth, sleek feel to it, but at the same time, it's got some nice grip on it, so you won't be dropping it all the time, like a chrome one. Um, the button on it is clear from the um, version 1, so it shines through that really bright LED a lot better. Um, loving the blue LCD screen. It's just really bright, really blue. Looks a lot better than the red on the other versions. Um, the Ego Top Cap. At first, like when I seen pictures of this, I didn't like it because it was extended and it looked kind of ugly in the pictures. But up close in person, it, it does. It really looks good. It almost looks better. Um, as you see, really nice thick well, uh, really nice thick, sturdy as hell, uh, 510 connection. Um, it doesn't have the Ego threads down in it to like say where you can screw a cone onto it. But it's wide enough and deep enough to where you can put like Stardust, pretty much anything that requires an Ego connection on it. Um, you just won't be able to like screw a cone onto it. So it's pretty much a a really recessed 510 connection with wide well on it to fit pretty much anything. Um, I mean, there's nothing on this device that says cheap. Everything is sturdy built. Everything is just it's pretty much flawless. I mean, you can see it for yourself, this is pretty much a flawless looking PV. Not to mention the looks of it. This is my favorite looking PV, hands down. It's just pretty much bling bling. I mean, everything I say is my opinion. You know. Um, the bottom threads on it, they're pretty good. They're not the greatest in the world, but they're pretty damn good once you take it and lube it up. When you get these brand new, you don't want to just keep on screwing this on and off, on and off with dry, squeaky threads. Because eventually it's going to wear away your threads, or you end up cross threading it and it'll just ruin it. What you want to do when you first get this out the box, get you some dielectric grease, some no locks, something like Vaseline will work. Get you some Vaseline, put it around your threads, screw it on and off, on and off, on and off. Wipe off the excess, and you know, just keep screwing it on and off until you feel that it's just really silky smooth. And then it'll stay silky smooth from here on out. You might have to touch it up with a little bit more Vaseline a couple months down the road or whatever. But, um, overall, it's, it's pretty damn good threads on it. You can see them up close. Pretty good damn threads. Um, it has a brass spring in it. Really nice, thick, durable spring. It's not like a lava tube spring. It's really cheap. It could break on you. This spring right here will last a lifetime. Um, as you see, it's just thick, nice stainless steel really solid I mean this little piece right here has some nice weight to it itself that tells you it's quality stuff as I said four vent holes in it um, fits on the batteries really good screws back onto the PV really good what you want to do when you're screwing it on is kind of push up on it so it won't drag the threads along and that helps it to go on and off a lot more smoother now see how I, I took the batteries out now my LCD screen is off until you go back into the menu settings only the button shows up so what you have to do is click it four times and then go to option number six and turn the LCD screen back on and then you'll be able to use all the other functions number one is voltage up number two is voltage down number three is device on and off number four or hold on let me go back to it right quick all right, number one, voltage up. Number two, voltage down. Three is device on and off. Four is your volt battery voltage check. And uh, five is where you can check the resistance of your whatever you have on it. You can check the um, voltage under load, or you can check the uh, operating voltage, what you have your PV set to. I'm just going to take it up to four volts. Oh, 
I turned the device off. Let's turn it back on real quick. So to turn it on, you want to go back to uh, menu setting number one, two, three, and turn it right back on. This is the Phoenix Rebuildable on here, and it hits like a champ too. You can get these from Got Vapes as well. They're um, about 14 bucks. Best damn automizer I've ever purchased in my life. Um, I mean, with the Phoenix and the Smoke Tech VMAX, I have finally found my perfect setup. I'm no longer out there searching for that perfect vape. Really, I did not think this day would come, but it's finally here with the Phoenix. Um, right now, I'm using Silica Wick in it. You can use stainless steel for like a Guinness type setup. Um, it's just a really versatile, really easy to use, and really affordable automizer. I did a review on this, um, so if you want to check that out, um, I think it's a couple of videos back. And then we'll be doing more reviews showing how to like build good wicks, how to do a stainless steel, how to do dual, triple coal, all that. Um, you can run triple coal in this. I've done duals, and it's it vapes like a champ. Especially on the VMAX. The VMAX just has this certain power to it that just, it vapes better than anything I have. I have tons of box mods, tube mods, variable voltage stuff, whatever. It, that stuff is just not compare anymore. I do not touch it. I'm going to sell it off or give it away. It's just like my newest version, two lava tubes or whatever. That's like vaping on air compared to vaping on the VMAX. And it's like holding a little toy. When you hold this, you're you can just feel it. It's almost like uh, holding a nice quality gun between holding a, a you know shitty quality gun. Um, it's just overall, it's a a damn nice PV. If you was on the fence about getting the Phoenix Automizer or the VMAX, you need to jump off and go get you one. Um, really good quality all the way around. Cannot go wrong with it. Um, as I said in like some posts on like ECF and stuff, my version one, I've ran over this with my foil. I've dropped it countless times and it's been working with no hiccups for months. I mean I've tried to get this thing to hiccup on me by running triple coils and pushing it to six bolts and I just could not get this thing to go bad on me to do anything. So that proves that they have longevity. Um, if I haven't said it already, you can get a six month warranty. Smoke Tech automatically has each VMAX you get has a six month warranty. Um, I think some places you might be able to extend the warranty. Um, and the price of this, you're not going to find another PV that's as built as good as this and it performs as good as this for the price. You just won't. Um, I guess that's it. If I think of any more things to do, I'll do a follow up review. But for now, keep watching, keep vaping, and, um, you just check back for more videos because I'm going to have a ton out here soon like how to build coals and stuff like that thanks for watching everybody happy vaping